want to welcome everybody here. It's nice to see you. You always are welcome. Uh, tonight we have some guests with us, and so we're going to let them go ahead and go, and then if they want to stick around for the meeting, they're welcome to. If they don't, we understand. So to begin with, we have Commissioner Dave Ditzler and Jim Jarek, and they're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, <clears throat> sales tax vote. So I'll turn it over to them. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. I apologize. I try not to put my back to you. Um, appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come here and speak and and, uh, and interrupt your meeting. Take a little bit of time. Um, but we did want to come to talk a little bit about the uh, the upcoming half percent sales tax renewal that's on the ballot. And it is a renewal. Uh, currently, you know, I like to to make sure we're all aware that. You know, in Mahoning County, as in uh, the whole state of Ohio, we have a 7% sales tax. You know, and, and uh, not in the whole state, 7% Mahoning County, of which uh, in Mahoning County, we get 1%. Uh, five and three quarter percent goes to the state of Ohio, a quarter percent goes to WRTA uh, by vote. And uh, so you're only paying back into Mahoning County 1% of our sales tax. And just recently, uh, at the end of last year, I think it was the end of September, the state of Ohio increased uh, your sales tax on the state's portion by a quarter of a percent. Uh, no, re no vote, no, no meetings, uh, no opportunity for the public to know what their money is being spent on, no justification, they just impose it. So our sales tax, is it's necessary to come out and to explain how we spend your money so that people know and have an opportunity to... Uh, to vote on that. Um, right now, <clears throat> I'd like to tell everybody that the uh, sales tax, the 1%, brings in about $35 million, about 15 million, uh, about 30 point something, uh, 30 in a fraction, about 15 in a fraction each of the half percents, about $30 million. So the sales tax brings in about $30 million total, both half percents, and we spend $39 million on public safety. And what I mean by public safety, I mean the judicial system, the sheriff's department, and the prosecutor's office. The general fund is about $52 million, of which $39 million goes to public safety. Um, the total general fund over the past, I want to say 10 years, has continued to decline in revenue. Uh, as you know, the township here is well, uh, well aware uh, loss of uh, local government funds, loss of uh, tangible personal property tax, loss of inheritance tax, all the losses that you face as a township, you know, we too as a county lose the local government funds. The general fund in 2008, using that as our benchmark, was at $60 million. Today, going to 2014, we're at about $53 million certified. Uh, we've lost about seven point, almost eight million dollars uh, over the years, and collectively, you know, you add that up over the five-year period using 2008 as our benchmark through 2013, we've lost 40 million dollars in revenue coming into the county uh, because of the cuts. Uh, the major cuts that we've seen are the local government fund. We lost three million dollars uh, investment revenue, uh, just not making any money on your money. Uh, we've lost over three million dollars and federal funds we've lost 4.2 million dollars so we've had almost a 10 million dollar hit coming from last year into this year uh, as a result of the cuts that have come you know into Mahoning County um, the one percent that we pay in as Mahoning County in the sales tax to Mahoning County for the sales tax is not is, is not unique uh, right now there are 22 counties out of the 88 counties in the state of Ohio at 1%. There's 14 at one and a quarter and 47 at one and a half. So there's 61 counties out of the 88 in the state of Ohio that have a higher sales tax that comes into their county to fund the county than Mahoning County does. So we're, we're on the low end of the scale currently. And right now, the, with the renewal, we still find ourselves at a $1.5 million deficit to balance the budget going into 2014. And going into 2015, we're at a $5 million deficit using the same numbers. So uh, we are well on our way to about a $6.5 million deficit going into 2015. And that's even with 
the renewal of the sales tax currently in, being passed. So uh, the intentions were to look for additional revenues uh, coming on to the ballot in the form of a sales tax, but we had a lot of meetings early on, and, and I think that similar to the townships, when you have police levies, fire levies, road levies, that they're specifically earmarked for certain things. We, the feedback we got from the, the general populace was that, you know, people wanted the money earmarked. So we didn't have an opportunity because of the timing on the uh, number of days before the election to change and to come out and propose an increase, say a quarter percent increase that would go to the justice system and only be able to be used for the sheriff's department or the judicial system or, you know, the prosecutor's office. So we opted not to put anything on the ballot in the form of an additional and just come back to, to the voters for the renewal of the half percent. Uh, it is the same tax that, we're currently, that we currently have, the only difference being that it's being, uh, uh, it's being uh, uh, placed on the ballot for a continuous period, not for every five years. Because right now, I mean, just the numbers speak for themselves. You know, we're at 39 million, uh, sp expending $39 million annually uh, out of the general fund uh, for just public safety. So the 30 million that brings the, the two half percent sales taxes uh, bring in something that you're never going to go below uh, from a standpoint of being able to provide, you know, the, the safety to the community. So uh, we put it on for a permanent time frame. One thing I did want to go over because I, um, and I just had these made, and forgive me too, I wanted to show you, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. You know, we all saw this in Sunday's paper. Maybe we did or didn't see it. 760 pay hikes, top 3%. That was uh, the vindicator. You know, when you talk about sensationalizing something and creating a story where there is none, um, if you look at, first of all, they, they took 2012 to 2013 as their numbers that they compared to not coming into this year. So 12 to 13 as their benchmark. Um, if you looked at 2009 going into 2013, the number of county employees was in 2009, 1,957. Today it's at 1,668. We've reduced it by almost 300 employees over that five year period in order to be able to balance the budget because of this. Now, the raises that they so-called, you know, they use the benchmark of the entire county to dictate the 760 number, of which those, there's approximately $150 million totally in that number that funds all of the employees countywide. And that, that includes, you know, MRDD, that includes uh, the um, mental health board, all the separate levies that come in that have nothing to do with the Mahoning County General Fund, nothing to do with the Mahoning County Commissioners who oversee, you know, these numbers. And if, when you start to break down the number of this, and actually their 760 was 761 when we went through it today, 336 of those were non-general fund employees that are not under the county commissioners or the county general fund. Of those, 336, 155 of those were <clears throat> what we call the PERS flip. What happened is, over all the years, and I'm sure the trustees know better than I do, that when you're negotiating contracts for safety forces, police, fire, road, any employees, what we always did as, as employers, you know, as township trustees, you know, being the employer, was we would recommend or try to offer in contract negotiations them, let us buy 1% of your PERS instead of giving you a 1% raise. Because if we gave you a 1% raise in your annual salary, we had, we had to pay PERS on top of that. So it cost me more to give you a 1% raise in your salary than it did for me just to give you a 1% PERS pickup. So over the years, in lieu of raises, townships, counties, cities, they paid employees PERS pickup so you didn't have to give them a raise. 
So that was their contract negotiations over those periods of time. Well, in 2012, prior to me becoming a county commissioner, they decided to <clears throat> flip all those and put it into their salary so that everybody could be compared apples to apples. You know, we had so many contracts. There's 18 different unions in the county, 18 or 22. In excess of 20, yes. Now. Yeah, it's 22. 22 unions and contracts to be negotiated with. We're trying to get some semblance of continuity, <clears throat> like, you know, levels of job classifications across the board to bring some parallels to salaries. And to do that, we wanted to get everybody on a level playing field. So we said, well, let's flip the PERS into their salary. Well, the county was paying about 11% or about 10, was paying 10% of their PERS. So in order to put that in their salary, they had to give them an 11% increase so that their out of pocket was identical. So they got a little bit under 1% raise by that PERS flip. But if you compared the salary from 12 to 13, the PERS flip shows as an 11% raise or 11% increase. But that was the PERS flip. So when, when we did that, that's where the majority of these numbers came. The 336 non-general fund employees, 155 of them was the PERS flip. 207 of them were general funds from the sheriff's department. The Sheriff's Department has been on concessions since 2009. Their concessions came off because of arbitra an arbitrator going to conciliation last year. We were mandated to pay the Sheriff's Department their concessions. Now, and, and quite honestly, I'm, I'm glad that we, we did. Because you've got a starting deputy sheriffs, you know, they, they, you know, they work here in your community, that makes $12.50 an hour. There's not many of us that would that would patrol with a gun and protect the lives of the community for twelve fifty an hour. So they came off of concessions. So they never got a raise. They went back to two thousand and eight wages, of which from two thousand and nine to through two thousand and thirteen they were on concessions. The arbitrator made us go back to pay them two thousand and eight wages. So they went back to two thousand and eight wages. So two hundred and seventy or two hundred and seven of this seven hundred and sixty are the sheriffs coming off the concessions. But how does the paper put it? Raises. The general fund did 114 PERS flips, no raises. The courts had 66 increases, of which, you know, when, when they hire people in the courts, you know, our focus has always been to make sure that your total budget stays underneath where the allocation for salaries is. They come in, they combine jobs, they eliminate jobs, just like Jim and, and Lou Vega did on the green team. They did a phenomenal job on the green team. You know, they were able to combine three positions into two. They eliminated one, another position. They saved about $120,000 in the green team salary, and they absorbed a lot of, in, a lot of the workload onto two people. And in doing so, the elimination of those three positions the rest of the staff got a 5% increase. So it was a good trade-off in our mind, you know, to, to save 120000 in wages for the green team and to give employees a 5% increase in doing so. So they're added into the general fund. Now, the veteran services, we have no control over veteran services. You know, they're, they're uh, generated by a board. There's a board that the probate court, or not probate, but the common police courts pick the, the individuals that sit on the Veteran Services Board, the Veteran Services Board, quite honestly, does what they think is, is the right thing to do. You know, they, they try to make sure they're commensurate with other counties, and they do things that, you know, if I was on that board, I wouldn't do. But I don't pick the members on the board. I don't vote for those those issues. And quite honestly, you know, I, it's... It's, it's something that uh, they've done a lot for our, for our country, for our community, you know, and I, I won't make any, you know, uh, references on, on how they do their job and what they do because I, I can't say that it's ex ex excessive or that it's justified. So, but we have no control of that. But what money they don't use, 
comes back to the general fund. But they're supposed to use the money that's collected for veteran services for veterans and to help veterans programs. Uh, the, when you drill it all the way down to the general fund, 14 people got raises that were in the general fund out of the total number of 760 that they want to sensationalize, you know, on the front page of the paper. Then they show just the, the sales tax monies from 2008 to today and show that, it, and that it's gone from 28 million to 31 million. So it's gone up $3 million, but that's not the general fund. You know, the general fund is the $54 million, $52 million that has all of the other deficits that we see annually going down and down and down. So um, it's, it's pretty unfair to, you know, to, uh, to write an article, and, and that was their intent. You know, I think the Vindicator's uh, focus is that they hate government employees and, you know, they, they like to make sure that they, uh, that they expose what they think is, uh, is something that, that really uh, is sensationalized and not factual. You know, but a lot of people look at the headlines and that's how they equate it to it and their reaction is, well, we vote no on the tax. But, you know, I mean, I'd like to vote no on my federal taxes and my state taxes. You know, I'd like to vote no on all of them. And, and, uh, but, you know, quite honestly, just like your township, the, the small amount, when you get your tax duplicate, you know, twice a year and you look at it and you see the amount that goes back to your community, to your township, for the services that are provided for your police, your fire, your roads, your your safety forces, your ambulance, you know, everything that comes into your community, it, we get a good bang for our buck. You know, whether it's our township government or our county government, our local government does a phenomenal job on behalf of the residents of Mahoney County, uh, in my estimation. <clears throat> Let me ask, Jim, anything that, I, I mean, I, I know I... Just a couple other things. Um, yeah, just... Regarding the raises, what the Vindicator also fails to report is the deputies went back to 2008 rate with their concessions. But prior to that, they had had nothing since 2005, I believe. 2004, 2005, they hadn't had anything. So actually, you're taking them back almost to that. Also, the commissioners, the employees that the commissioners directly oversee, set all their... Um, pay rates and everything, they have not had a raise since 2008. With the flip, it's the same money they're taking home in their pocket. All it is, is it helps you in the market if you're buying a house or a car to actually show what you're actually making. Because for many years the public said that we are trying to hide something. But one thing with this board of commissioners, they're very transparent in what they do. So we're showing you, this is the actual cost of an employee. There's no hidden agenda, but there was no additional money to come home. Uh, but as I say, the commissioner's office hadn't had anything since 2008. When they mentioned um, the green team, which we're a non-general fund office, All right, we get our from fees at the landfill, and we had had, they compared 3% uh, to the cost of living is 1.47, 1.77, but they failed to realize that since uh, January 4th of, of 2007, we hadn't had any raises in our office, despite the fact that we distribute to many other agencies. We give out, and we were giving out in excess of $2 million to um, communities and otherwise. Okay. That's that issue. Um, on the sales tax map, some of the questions we've got out there, well, there are five counties that are less than us. And that's a good question as far as a sales tax. But if you look at them, these are counties that either have other types of industry or when you look at the um, Summit and Stark, great retail. Um, down yeah, the, uh, exactly. Jim is right when he says that because their half percent sales tax collects double what ours does. So they could have less than 1% and still their, their, the monies they collect is almost twice of what ours is because of their retail industry in their, in their community. Right. Um, the brochure, I mean, there's a ton of information in here. And, you know, we're not going to put anything out unless it's the truth and it's verified. 
and quite a bit of work went into this to make sure that you know it is accurate and you know, we're open to questions on everything but once again as the commissioner stated that the significant portion of what we spend on the general fund goes to protect the health and safety and security of the community. I mean, that's about it. Now, there's other questions that are in here. And with this, as he also stated, our revenue is around $50 million. But we're putting a 51.5 would be the revenue. But we still have a $53 million budget. And that's when he mentioned the million and a half that we're going to try to finagle and uh, get through this year with the then projections for out in the future. Those are, you know, those are, that's the reality of it. And as you all know, with the state cuts and the state cuts and the state cuts, and once again, our commissioners are allowing you to vote on this. Many of these other counties where they have this, if you see the red, if you see the black, they just impose the tax. So, I mean, that's, I think we caught it all. Yes, there are any questions? And uh, knowing that uh, Deputy Sheriff Boggs is here, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we should pass the hat because he deserves a lot more money than he's making right now to protect our community. And if I could give him a raise personally, I would give him a raise of more than 10%. I would. So. And through the chair, um, may, may I ask that if. if Five minutes, maybe eight minutes, ten minutes, whatever it takes. Anybody wants to make a comment, it takes a lot of courage when a commissioner comes out and then he, he's he's laying it out there for everybody to see and and being part of our discussion here tonight. Does anybody want to make a comment before any of us do so? Yeah. I'm Lee Sandstrom. Uh, I just was wondering with what you said about the flip, mm -hmm. uh, how much was taken away from the PERS percent? when you flipped it back to the employees? All of it, 100%. We don't, pay, we don't pay any. The employer now, on the ones that were flipped, the employer was paying 10% right, of their right. pension. Now we pay none of their pension, of their portion of their pension. So we, we took it, it was equal, it was one for one. We gave them an 11% raise and we quit paying 10% of their PERS. So it, it equated on the bottom line to a little bit under a 1% of a raise, but that was necessary in order to equal their out-of-pocket money so that they didn't lose anything in their pocket from their paycheck. The additional taxes that are yeah. incurred. Okay, okay. What, <coughs> what does the county put into PERS then? What percent do you put in for the employee? They used to put 10 in. What were you putting in? I, I, I don't know that exact number. I, the full, you know that? full PRS is approximately 24%. Okay. So you were putting That's 14, both. you're still doing 14. 13.95. Okay. Okay, now, the way this all started, by the way, a little bit of a... Commissioner Trafficani calls me the historian as well. Um, the PRS... That just up, means we're old, Jim. Right. <laughs> right. Um, shoot, I grew up with Deputy Boggs, so you don't tell me we're old. Um, but... The PRS pickup started in 1991 with the original half percent tax. Um, they needed a tax and what, what they did then is in the contracts they negotiated starting back then, they started doing the pickup in lieu of any raises because it, is, it was cheaper then. So this is something that's been going on for you know, 24, 25 years and now the commissioners in line with people saying, oh, get more in line with the public sector, let's be more transparent, let's show your real wages, they're coming into that. So now they are what they're required by law, just like your regular employer is uh, required to provide so much FICA, and then you pick up your other Social Security, um, the county is still required by law to provide 13.95% uh, and then law enforcement is more, and then the employees are, are required to pick up the 10, and so now the employees are paying their full PERS pickup. Um, and they even pay it, though. They, oh, can yeah. keep, they can keep that money, can't they? Yeah. No, Ooh, they have no. to pay it. Uh, they have to pay it. No, it's, it's, taken, it's taken right out of the check. Yeah, it's just... Even though it went into their salary? 
Yes. It's now taken it's, right back out. Right, it's taken yes. right back out. That's why it only equated to 1%. Yeah, there's no increase in take home. Yeah, actually, no, actually, no increase in raise at all. Actually, for the year, <laughs> I'm taking home $8 more. Okay, with your 11%. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm taking home $8 more because you do buy a straight percentage. See, yeah, I was so curious sorry. what they were able to do with that, but you're saying you add it to their wages. And then we take it back out. In so the, you take it out for them pay. Yeah. For them to pay it. Right. For us to pay it. All 10%. Right. But we had to pay, give them 11%, so they're, so like and Jim said, it's an if we only did a 10% for 10, 10 for 10%, the average person yeah. loses about $50 a month in salary. So we made it 11% to match it. Because you so pay additional income tax on it as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? Yes. Yes. Will any of this money go to fix those horrendous roads in Youngstown? <laughs> no. I was just going to ask that. Ah. No, the, all the roads go through the county engineer. Are the, the, Give him some money, will the, you? The, you know, well, the, part of that the only, that the only thing, thing that the county engineer runs off of is license plate fee, and the gasoline tax. And the problem there is, is that with all the hybrid cars and the better gas mileage, less gas is being purchased. They're getting less money. Their budget's steadily declining, not increasing. So it's more difficult for the county engineers to keep up. You know, so it, the other thing that happens is, is twofold. You know, the bad thing about being broke and having to just make costs, or now you no longer have matching funds, you no longer have matching funds for grants, grant opportunities, and all the things that come along with, you know, need, the needs of a county and a community. So, you know, we can't put up 20% matching funds for a $16 million road project on Meridian Road that we already have the engineering study done on it, because we don't have $3 million to put into the pot in order to get the $13 million that we could get from the state and federal government. Well, they're so bad, you could justify taking the money out of the safety section of it because those roads are really bad. The, the health and safety, when we talk about it, is the sheriff's deputies, yeah. the courts, the prosecutor's office. Right. Yeah, and those are... Oh, critical. Yeah, the, those and are the other thing, let me tell you about the sheriff's department. They were at 322, 25 employees. They're at 222 today. So when you talk about doing a phenomenal job you know that department the sheriff's deputies the sheriff sheriff green and his people uh, they have done an excellent job they they're finding different opportunities to try and preserve positions to try and bring money into the county and you know it's 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 been a breath of fresh air you know on, on how they've you know done such a great job and they have for a long time in my eyes and you know right now i mean you know you can't balance the budget on the backs of the deputy sheriffs because the problem is, is if you lose $15 million out of your budget and $39 million is already going for, for public safety, where's our biggest expenditure? $20 million of, its general fund, or of our general fund goes to the Sheriff's Department. So you don't have an opportunity. You don't have an opportunity to save money. You know, if we lose $15 million, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it's going to balance on the back of the, of the Sheriff's Department. They're the ones doing the best job. So it'd be totally unfair to to have that happen, you know, with respect to the sales tax, and because of things like this that are, you know, in my eyes, the National Enquirer of Mahoning County. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're smart coming out and explaining that article because it certainly uh, is a slanted article. Sure. Kind of indicating that. Uh, all government employees are greedy and uh, I know from past experience that they are not and it's obviously obvious that you need that half a percent but uh, it like I say it's a good thing you're rebutting that article the but is a lot of your citizens like to have you come to us every five years and show how you're spending the public's money. And I think you're taking a little bit of a chance of making uh, a gamble here to make it continuous. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, it, it, it would have been a lot safer just to make it a renewal. Because a lot of people don't like the continuous. They like for you to 
sweat before us every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Hey Dave. Yes. One question I just thought of. Mm -hmm. Are you putting out any signs about we support it or anything? I haven't seen any. I didn't know whether anybody was no, putting any uh, signs out. No, we really haven't. Uh, you know, we're we've been doing kind of a grassroots going around, hitting every community and I've been to four four rotaries and you know, it's you know, it's been just you know, trying to get to township association. You know, we'd like the township association and I know we've got Austin Town gave us a letter of support for it, but we'd like, you know, the township association to you know, possibly give us a letter of support that we can publicize. And, you know, we had an editorial with the Vindicator last week for three hours. They questioned us on it and everything. And, and really, I think they support it as well. And they understand. But, you know, it didn't change this because it sells papers. Anybody else? Fred, Mr. Chair, do I, can I speak? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, Dave told you how he feels about tax. We wish we would pay him, but it's certainly when we think about sales tax, it's the fairest tax there is. Everybody's paying it. It doesn't, and what they're buying, you know, other than the ones that are not taxable, uh, those kind of things. Um, but what comes down to us, I, I think, when the vindicator is, is saying that to people, it's it's kind of us to educate people too. We go from here. So it's uh, only us 20 people here in this room, but we go educate people too about the facts of this. Uh, and, and what it comes down to me personally is willing to pay for the services that we get. Um, I will speak for Ellsworth Township because uh, I'm a single person here, but the two trustees certainly have their own thoughts. And uh, what the service we get, I know that as being here 12 years, uh, the Sheriff's Department, we've had an agreement with the Sheriff's Department. Um, Certainly, do have a post here that services the western part of the county. Dave has been aware of that even when he was a trustee in Austin Town. Certainly, to know that uh, uh, we benefit by that. We we've crafted an agreement where we give something, but we're getting much more in return. Uh, he talked about Sheriff Green uh, getting a grant, got creative. Uh, you mentioned that, Dave. Uh, we've got a resource officer to school. Uh, they're digging, digging, digging. We were part of it, right, guys? And. Uh, uh, Berlin was part of that, and we've got a resource officer. We have to keep thinking outside the box. But here's the state. Name one thing you can think of what the state has given us back for that 1%. Five and three quarter, the state. Yeah, they, but that additional they, they five one. five and three quarter off of us, you know. That additional 1% since that happened, can we name, name one thing? Everything that we've talked about here tonight is our services in our little corner of the world here. Great point. And, and already you make a great point too is when you talk about fair, it's also calculated that about 35% of the sales tax is generated by non-county residents. People from Pennsylvania, neighboring counties coming over to spend their money within our county. So we're, we're paying 65 cents and getting a dollar's worth of services back. So it's, it's also, you know, creates even more of a fair opportunity for us. I do have one question. Where does the bed tax go for the hotels and motels? And the, uh, the bed tax goes to fund the airport and the port authority. It keeps the airport operating. It goes, uh, the bed tax generated $1.1 million last year uh, for the port authority and $300,000 for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, so it funds those two entities. Uh, that's our portion to the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport to keep the airport operating and to keep the uh, Port Authority running, that the Port Authority now is go going to handle the construction of the new dog pound that we're going to have in Mahoney, uh, Mahoney County. We were able to buy the property over on uh, North Meridian Road, the old jump stretch facility. Ten acres came with it. It's a phenomenal opportunity for us. And the Port Authority is going to do the whole project and lease the building back to us. And they're going to handle all the fees out of our money that we pay to operate the Port Authority. So it's a, it's a good opportunity for us. Yeah. Don't townships that have motels get the bed tax and they can use it the way they want? Yeah, they get a portion of it, yeah. Oh, a portion I think, of it. Um, yeah. Uh, I think there's a percentage because I know that in Austin Town Township, you know, with the five or six hotels we had at the, at the uh, interstate, I, I want to say that annually we got in the neighborhood of about $40,000 and uh, came back to the township for our portion of the bed tax. But the, I want to say 5% of it goes to the county. Is it, is it 5? 
Um, it was yes, it was raised from uh, three and a half to five a couple about four years ago or three years ago, and so it, that all goes to the two entities, the Port Authority and Convention and Visitors Bureau. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I, uh, I really thank you. Thank you for the job that you guys do and giving well, us the thank opportunity you to come out. And, uh, we, appreciate and we appreciate your job. Thank you. Hate to run, but we're going to head to Struthers and try and catch their meeting as well. So. Very good. Hey, grab a cookie and water on the way out. You know what? Yeah. I got my water, but, you know, Artie, I'm trying to lose weight like you. you know? No cookies. Stay away from you. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stay away from his wife because she'll pull me around the neighborhood. <laughs> I think you've lost 40 something. Dave, Dave, how, many, how much have you lost? 40 something? Um, you know what? I. I'll give you the numbers. I was at 225. You know, being four foot tall, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and I, I was on that AdvoCare diet, you know, and, and I went down to 185. This morning I was at 192, so I, I, I put on about seven, but I'm I'm down a little over a little over 30 pounds. So. Thank you. And you didn't have to tell us that uh, Deputy Bob and Jim were the same uh, group in the same neighborhood. They go to the same barber. You know what? They go to the same barber, too. You got one. You got one. <laughs> okay, we have one more guest with us, and she is Judge Carol Robb. Uh, she's practiced law for 18 years, and before being appointed magistrate of the Common Pleas Court in 2001. In 2005, she was elected judge of Columbiana County Municipal Court, a position she now continues to serve. And she's running for the 7th District Court of Appeals, and she'd just like to talk to us a little bit. So, go ahead. Well, thank you very much. Uh, each of you, Artie, Bob, Fred, thank you very much. Karen, it's very nice to meet you tonight. And, you know, it's always dangerous to give an attorney a crowd, an audience, and a mic, an unlimited time. You know, so I promise to keep this very short. Thank you again for the invitation to be here. As um, Fred just indicated, uh, my name is Judge Carol Robb. I currently serve the Columbiana County Municipal Court. I practiced law for 18 years, part of that being here in Youngstown, before I left and went down to Columbiana County to practice out of my home community because I had two little ones at home. I practiced law for 18 years, and in 2001, I was appointed as magistrate of the Common Police Court. Uh, in 2005, I was elected as the municipal court judge in Columbiana County, a position that I currently hold. I want to ask you folks something. How many of you follow the legal news? I'm sure you do. <laughs> How many of you? Yeah, you, you follow the legal news, you follow the sheriff's report, you see the same names over and over and over again. Notice this? Don't you ever wonder why? Well, I wasn't in this position very long when I asked that same question. So I formed two steering committee meetings. The first steering committee was with the mental health and substance abuse community, the, the county prosecutor's office and the public defender's office, as well as the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Board. And we formed the steering committee and we did a study and we formed what we now call the Mental Health Doc of Columbiana County, which is called STAR. And STAR became the first mental health court in the state of Ohio to be certified by the Ohio Supreme Court. It's being used for all mental health courts throughout the state of Ohio. And the reason being you don't see those names that keep repeating and repeating? When somebody graduates from STAR, there's only an 18% chance that they're going to come back and see us. Let me give you one success story. There was a lady in our court, when I first thought about forming the mental health court, I said to my probation officer, think of five names that defendants that you know on a first name basis. I mean, you almost want to invite them to the evening meal. That's how familiar they are to you, right? He named five of them. He did a, a, a criminal background check on these five individuals. Guess how many times one individual had been charged in a five-year period? Anybody want to make a wild guess? 20. You're low. 25. Um, 25 times. Now you can appreciate how much time is burned up going out to the same place. 25 times in a five-year period. So this was one of the first individuals that we accepted into the STAR program. This individual was in the STAR program for a year and a half. This individual had substance abuse issues. We got them sober, free of, free, free, free of substance abuse. We got them properly diagnosed, properly medicated. They're doing great. They were graduated in 2008. I haven't seen them back on the criminal docket 
since 2008. This individual comes into our court now. I've seen this individual twice. You want to know why? Because this individual now owns a duplex. They live on one half and they rent the other half and they've had to evict their tenants two times. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to see. That's exactly what we want to see. And this program has been so successful, it uses the template throughout the state of Ohio. I have 12 mental health dockets in the state of Ohio that we're mentoring to help them come on board and do the things that we're doing in our community. The second <coughs> steering committee that we formed is, didn't take me long to realize that a lot of the defendants that I see, they either can't get jobs, or they do get a job and they can't keep a job. And I was wondering why. Have any of you heard of Bridges Out of Poverty? Any of you heard of that program? Well, it's an amazing program that begins to identify the differences in economic class and the different rules of economic class. And so what we did is we formed another steering committee. We brought the Department of Job and Family Services, One Stop, Community Action Agency, Kent State University, and Youngstown State University together. And we formed what we call Defendants Getting Ahead. And we have put 50 defendants through the Defendants Getting Ahead program. And what we're finding is when people work, they're less likely to commit crimes. We only have about 18% of our graduates that come back through the system. And this program has been so successful that the Supreme Court trained 14 other judges and counties <coughs> in the state to do exactly what we're doing here in the Mahoney Valley. 14 others. And once at every quarter, I do a telephone conference with other judges and judicial colleges throughout the United States so that they can learn what we're doing here in the Mahoney Valley to put people back to work and keep them out of the court system. So, I've presided over a lot of contested motion hearings, both civil and criminal. I've presided over a lot of court trials, both civil and criminal. And I've presided over a lot of jury trials, both criminal and civil. I want to keep it short tonight. I know you guys have a long evening ahead of you. I appreciate so much for the forum here. I'm here to introduce myself, to earn your respect, so that I can gain your support. I thank you very much, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Just give you a little bit of information. This is a this is just a brief brief biography and a little bit of detail. Certainly, be happy to. I'll be happy to. There you go. Thank you. Again, thank you so much. Have a great evening, and I appreciate your attention here.